I bet you've heard this a million times, Marvel Studios has a plan to make a sequel to 2008's The Incredible Hulk. Am I right? Well, their wish might actually come true. Finally! Even though this was one of the lowest grossing MCU movies, fans really enjoyed this version of the popular character. So let's check what we have on the horizon. Stay with me until the end, as I have some really interesting news to share with you. The Incredible Hulk may not be quite the smashing success that fans of Marvel's raging behemoth might hope for, but it offers more than enough big screen action to make up for its occasionally puny narrative. Reads the review on Rotten Tomatoes, and I couldn't agree more. Yeah, this is the right way to describe the previous movie, but this period was much different than today, okay? Having a movie like this back in 2008 was pure gambling. Although these days, when you see that MCU is releasing a movie, you're probably thinking, this is a guaranteed success. Well, back in 2008, Marvel was a rookie film studio. With no proven track record of its own, it only worked alongside others. But let me tell you something, nobody had ever tried to make a shared cinematic universe just like they did. Okay, maybe Phase 1 had a few missteps, but back then, when they were frequently course-correcting and Marvel Studios didn't have a reputation for long-term planning like today, before I move on and start talking about the next Hulk projects, let's get back to 2008 for a very short recap. For those of you who found Ang Lee's Hulk too talky, the 2008 movie was without a doubt an ideal version of the Hulk saga. With Incredible Blonsky, The Incredible Hulk had completed his Hulk on Hulk showdown. The movie's dealing with two different characters, the rampaging destructive Hulks and the mild-mannered scientist Dr. Bruce. In fact, the Dr. Bruce goes into frenzies of aggression whenever he's annoyed and becomes that green guy, and this happens pretty frequently as the army is usually unloading different weapons into him. The most interesting question that I've read about the character is whether Dr. Banner is really conscious inside the Hulk. Well, it was a bit different in the Ang Lee version when Banner confesses, When it happens, when it comes over me, when I totally lose control, I like it. While in the 2008 version, he says, That is like a hyperthyroid acid trip and he only remembers fragments of moments. <laughs> Hulk as a story in general set the events really interesting and much different than other movies. How's that? Well, take it this way, it's very obvious that the tragedy that the Doctor faces is because of the Hulk-inducing substance in his blood, but that didn't happen. Nobody would have made a movie only for Dr. Banner. On the other hand, if Hulk existed without Dr. Banner, he would have been like Godzilla one-dimensional. Overall, the movie was really good, and it definitely deserved a sequel. Norton smashed that like button just like you should do if you haven't done so already. No, really, he was involved in this project from 2007, and he didn't expect to be just an actor. When Norton came on board, the screenplay was actually unfinished since Zack Penn had left the project to work on the grand. So yes, he became an actor and writer and he was thrilled to work on the final draft. He actually grew up loving this character and his plan was to make Hulk what Christopher Nolan did with Batman. If there was ever a thing that I thought had that in it, it was the Hulk. It's literally a Promethean myth, said the actor. And let's remember, this was the time when Marvel was about to develop its house style, even though it may seem like something of an odd fit for the MCU. The first film was to portray Bruce as somebody who had learned to live through the transformation as a victim. The movie ended up with a cliffhanger, Banner is attempting to control the transformation and he succeeds or he fails. Well, if there was a sequel, we would have known. Back in the day, there was a speculation that The Incredible Hulk 2 would be released even before The Avengers. Right after that, we could hear the idea that Marvel was playing with the idea of using the Hulk as the villain in The Avengers. Why did things get stuck on one movie only? The Incredible Hulk has been the only solo movie so far, but the new update revealed that Disney potentially selling Hulu might lead us to another Hulk-focused solo movie. You already know that a couple of years after the release of the first movie, Marvel decided to replace Norton with Mark Ruffalo. With that being said, the potential sequel will bring us Ruffalo as the lead actor. The new report has offered fans a bit of hope on the subject, so it kind of slowed down the speculation on another Marvel Studios-produced Hulk movie starring Mark Ruffalo. Jason Bazinet, who is a Wall Street analyst, hinted that Disney is probably in the process of acquiring the movie rights for Namor and Hulk. This means that Disney will try to secure the rights in order to make a potential sale of its 67% stake in Hulu. The biggest candidate for buying Disney's stake right now is probably Comcast, the American streamer who also owns NBC Universal. 
Everything is on the table right now, so I'm not going to speculate whether we're a buyer or a seller of Hulu, but I obviously have suggested that I'm concerned about undifferentiated general entertainment, particularly in the competitive landscape that we're operating in, and we're going to look at it very objectively and expansively, said Disney CEO Bob Iger. If recent rumors turn out to be true, the Hulk could finally be getting his next solo movie, as Geeks Worldwide shared. With the title World War Hulk, the new Hulk movie is in the works at Marvel Studios. Isn't that exciting? The report adds that the movie will hit that subscribe button and smash that notification bell. No, really, in all seriousness, the movie will likely be first set up by the events of She-Hulk. There's no verification from Disney or Marvel whatsoever, but this concept of a solo movie, especially with the World War Hulk angle, has definitely intrigued a lot of Marvel fans. The movie will probably be the multiverse saga Civil War, the story in the comic goes this way, tricked by Illuminati, Hulk is going to space, and he's seeking revenge on the superhero group once he arrives back on Earth. Hulk then kills several X-Men, confronts Professor Xavier, and goes on to fight the new Avengers, Gamma Core, and the Fantastic Four. MCU used some elements of this story, such as Bruce Banner being exiled, but the events that happened between Thor Ragnarok and that moment Avengers, Age of Ultron remain unknown. The Illuminati was introduced in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, along with the hints in She-Hulk, Attorney at Law, which left the possibility that the Hulk could have a match with the group in the future. We really can't predict what might happen, taking in mind that the current iteration of the superhero is Smart Hulk, not exactly vengeful, nor that angry. In this role, we might see Scar, Hulk's son. We'll have to wait to find out. One thing is for sure, Ruffalo will be the lead actor, Tatiana Maslany will most likely be Jennifer Walters' She-Hulk, and wait to hear this, Harrison Ford as General Thunderbolt Ross, Red Hulk, and the right guy to replace the iconic William Hurd. It's very possible that Marvel Studios will plant the seeds for Abomination to be in a World War Hulk. In The Incredible Hulk, Tim Roth originally appeared as Emil Blonsky, but he was left out of every subsequent MCU movie in the Infinity Saga. If you ask me, I think that Will Deusner was incredible as Scar in the She-Hulk finale, so he could also be involved in a World War Hulk MCU movie. Anyway, whatever the plot may be, and whoever gets in the cast, I just hope to hear more official information soon. I'm pretty sure we will. And what about you? What do you think will be the focus of the new movie?